Good morning, DCC family. We're so glad you could join us today. If you're standing in your living room, go ahead and get on your feet and let's get ready to worship. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole grateful for you. Lord, you have made a way where there seems no way, God, and I am saying that the rocks will not cry out before I do, God, and I'm so grateful, Lord. So from the altar of my life, God, let this be a pleasing sacrifice to you.
Father, I just lay all of my burdens down, God, all of my fears at your feet, and I bless your name. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like now. i 
ever with us, Lord, and we're so grateful, God. We magnify you. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Morning, Day Spring family. I know this is a little different than what we're normally used to. Usually we're gathered together in this beautiful sanctuary worshiping the Lord, but we are thankful that God is not limited to a church building, that He is right there in your homes with you, and we can worship the Lord together uh, video, uh, via all of this awesome technology that we have, which we're all still trying to learn along the way. So I just want to get right into the Word of God today as we continue this series that we're in, Redeemed. It's our run-up to Resurrection Sunday. And so this message today uh, could not be more timelier. It's about how God redeemed our body, and it's about healing. And if we look in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 26 together, it says, So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tip whip and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Two weeks ago, we began a new series as part of our run-up to Resurrection Sunday entitled Redeemed. And I gave the definition of redemption. And so I want to give it to you again this morning. Redemption is defined this way. To regain possession of something in exchange for a payment. You know, when we read in Genesis how mankind's perfect fellowship with God was broken because of sin. However, from even before that, it says from the, from the foundations of the world, God had a plan on how to redeem mankind. It's always been God's heart to restore the broken fellowship uh, that, that is between him and mankind and to regain possession of those who are lost because of sin. Romans 3, 23 through 25 tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. When we think about redemption, we have to remember this. Redemption came at a cost. To redeem is to regain possession of something in exchange for a payment. The payment to redeem fallen mankind was nothing less than the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He redeemed us through his shed blood at Calvary. When Christ redeemed us, he redeemed us in full. You know, you're not on some kind of a, a payment plan with Jesus. When Jesus redeemed you, he redeemed you fully. He paid the full price of your redemption, meaning that you've been redeemed fully, body, soul, and spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, every individual on this planet is, uh, is composed of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. And so when Jesus came to redeem us, he came to redeem us fully. He came to redeem our body, he came to redeem our soul, and he came to redeem our spirit. In part one of this series, we learned how Christ redeemed our soul. We defined our soul as our mind, will, and emotions. But this week, we want to examine how he redeemed our body. Many people do not realize that what, what all was included when Christ purchased our salvation. Whenever I go to the grocery store, not the grocery store, usually like Walmart, and I buy something, I'm always careful to look at the box at what it includes. I've bought one too many things in the past where I got home and opened the box and realized I didn't have an adapter or I didn't have batteries, something that was not included in the box because I wasn't paying close attention to what was included. I believe that there are a lot of people today that are living their life the very same way. 
is that they don't know what's all included in their redemption. And so they're not benefiting from fully for their salvation because they believe maybe forgiveness of sins is included, but they don't recognize that also is deliverance. They recognize that deliverance is included, but maybe not healing. So when we look today, we want to study the components of body, soul, and spirit, but we're focusing on body today and what it means to be healed. Although what I bought at that store, when I opened up that box, it had no defects. I could not enjoy it fully without those additional components. For many, salvation is nothing more than forgiveness of sins, which, mind you, is pretty amazing. However, if we study the Greek word for salvation, and that Greek word is sozo, S-O-Z-O, which is used a hundred times in the New Testament. When we realize what that word means, we realize there is much more to salvation than forgiveness of sins. In fact, we look at the word sozo, we find it in several places. One of them is in Matthew 121, and you can see that passage here. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save. And that word save is the Greek word sozo, and he saves his people from their sins. So we see that forgiveness of sins definitely is part of our salvation experience. In Mark chapter 5 and verse 23, we have a different story. Here it says, and begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. If you look up that word healed in the Greek, they use the word sozo interchangeably there. So not only is forgiveness of sins a part of our salvation, but healing is a part of that redemption as well. Finally, if we look at Luke chapter 8 and verse 36, it says they also who had seen it told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. And that word healed here, also the word we get deliverance from is also the Greek word sozo. So when we look at the scripture and we talk about redemption, we talk about salvation, we understand that in that package of salvation comes forgiveness of sin, comes healing, and comes deliverance. So Christ didn't just make provision for our sins to be forgiven, but with his blood, he also purchased our healing. Nothing that Jesus did, did he do by accident. Nothing. In fact, Gethsemane was strategic for redeeming our souls. And Calvary was strategic for saving our spirit. The whipping post was strategic for redeeming our bodies. Isaiah 53 and verse 5 describes it this way. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And then get this, and by his stripes we are healed. Where did he receive those stripes? He received those stripes at the whipping post. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. We see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament as well, that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed, and that healing of our body was part of Christ's redemptive work at Calvary, but it was part of his redemptive work at the whipping post. There are some that say that this passage in 1 Peter 24 is referring solely to our spiritual healing. However, salvation or sozo encompasses much more than that. There is a story that we read in Matthew chapter 9 verses 1 through 8 that kind of helps bring some clarity to our understanding that not only does Jesus heal us spiritually, he heals us physically. Jesus demonstrated that he heals both. And so in Matthew chapter 9, it says, So he got in a boat, and he crossed over, and he came to his own city. And then behold, they brought him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. And at once, one of the, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk? 
but that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And then he said, and, and he arose and departed to his house. Now, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. You know, I find it interesting that in Jesus' day, they accepted him healing physically, but they rejected him for giving sins. You fast forward 2,000 years, and we readily accept him forgiving sins, but we stumble over him healing physically. However, it's both. So much so that it is even represented in communion. Each time that we take communion, we've learned that communion is a picture of redemption. Christ's blood shed at Calvary, but also his body broken. When we receive the bread, that is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The traditional matzah bread that was used in Jesus' day was striped and it had holes in it. It was pierced. Another demonstration, even through communion, that Jesus redeemed our bodies. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as the Apostle Paul is writing about the significance of communion, this is what he says. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. I've often read that and, and thought to myself, that has to do with our behavior. It has to do with if we take it unworthily, if we've been in sin or we have been sinning or we've thought things that we should not have thought, if we've received it unworthily. But in verse 28, it goes on to say, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. Notice this, not discerning the Lord's body, not discerning what that bread truly represents. Notice what it says next in verse 30. For this reason, many are what? Weak and sick among you and many sleep. You see, the power of the, the body broken, it's a representation of divine healing, of redemption. We believe that Jesus forgave our sins at Calvary's cross, but with the same faith do we believe that he healed us at the whipping post? Do we believe that our healing is just as much an important part of our redemption as our forgiveness of sins or our deliverance? Is it possible that the reason that many are sick and, and weak among us, is it because that we've not discerned that our healing has been secured for us through Christ's sacrifice at the whipping post. That healing is as much a reality as our forgiven sins. Every stripe that he bore, he took that our bodies could be redeemed. A tremendous, tremendous price was paid for your redemption. Deuteronomy 25 and verse 3 says this, But never give more than 40 lashes. More than 40 lashes would publicly humiliate your neighbor. This passage is why we often hear that Jesus received 40 lashes for our healing. However, the 40 lashes was a Jewish mandate, not a Roman one. The Romans were not bound to follow those guidelines. The whipping post that Jesus endured was much more vicious. We know this because Isaiah writes in Isaiah 52 in verse 14 regarding the outcome of Jesus's crucifixion he writes this but many were amazed when they saw him notice his face was so disfigured he seemed hardly human and from his appearance one would scarcely know that he was a man there was a tremendous price paid at the whipping post if you have ever watched the movie the passion of the christ uh, it is an intense movie to watch, but the most intense part of that movie is the scene at the whipping post. It is graphic, it is violent, it is bloody. It is harder to watch than any other part of that entire movie, in my opinion. And I believe that it was done purposely 
to show just how vicious the beating that Jesus took was. Just how much blood was truly shed for our salvation. Not just for the forgiveness of our sins, but I believe specifically at the whipping post that he redeemed our bodies and for our healing that was purchased right in that moment. Jesus purchased a lot more than our forgiveness of sins. He purchased healing and deliverance as well. He redeemed you fully, body, soul, and spirit. And just as by faith you receive forgiveness of sin, it is by faith that you receive healing in your body. Today, we want to, as we close, we want to pray for your salvation. We want to pray for you to receive forgiveness of sin and healing. So be sure as we, we close up this time together, you can comment in the section below. If you need prayer for healing, please comment so we can pray with you and believe with you by faith that you are going to be healed. If you need forgiveness of sins, comment below if you've prayed to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior with us. And so I just ask you to bow your heads at home. For those of you who may be watching for the first time, hey, we had our fa Facebook Live on Wednesday night. We had over 1,000 people join us for service that night in our living room. People all over the world. I got a message from Uganda today thanking us for that message and that ministry that evening and for the, the, the video we sent out this week from the book of Jeremiah encouraging us. Listen, God is spreading the gospel around the world. What the enemy may have meant for evil, God is turning it around for good. And many, many people are hearing about the love of Christ for the very first time. On Wednesday night, we had probably at least a half a dozen first-time visitors to our church via Facebook. I believe that we're going to have several more as this video goes forward and touches people's hearts and lives this week. So I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads. i got a few people here sitting with me, our worship team. But all around the world, in your living rooms, church family, bow your heads. We're going to pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you that when Jesus went to the whipping post to redeem our bodies, Father God, that we receive healing because of his sacrifice. Lord, we are fully redeemed, body, soul, and spirit, when we put our faith in his blood shed for us. Lord, we pray for those today who are commenting even now. They are saying, I need healing in my body. Lord, we ask that you would release your healing virtue in Jesus' name. Lord, speak the word right now over their body for those struggling with the coronavirus. But Lord, there are many others who are struggling with other sicknesses and diseases and ailments today. And we believe that, God, you're releasing healing into all of those situations. We thank you, God, for that happening. We also pray for those who have joined us today and they would say, Pastor, I do not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've never repented of my sins and I've never received his forgiveness. Would you just pray with me today? Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive Christ. I repent of my sins. I believe that he went to Calvary's cross and he died for me. I believe that he was buried and raised three days later that I might have eternal life. Lord, help me now to live for you. Help me, Lord, to live for Christ. Help me to be a light to this world. Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we want to thank you so much. I just want to encourage you, if you were part of the service today, we did this on Wednesday night. It was fun, but you could take a picture, a selfie, upload it, let everybody know if you were joining us for service today. That's one way we can stay connected. I also encourage you, if you have not connected with us ver via our texting uh, groups, we have a men's and women's texting group that goes on daily. We'd love for you to email us at the church. Give us your number. Let us connect with you that way as well so you can be, stay connected to your church family until this time of uh, the gatherings being limited is lifted and we can once together gather together in the house of God. So God bless you all, and we look forward to seeing you Wednesday night. We're going to do our Wednesday night live from our living room again this week, and we look forward to seeing you then. God bless.